Well, we thank God for His mercy and His grace. We have had uh, wonderful singing and praising and prayer in the presence of God. Uh, but uh, before we can begin sharing in the Word of God, I want us to, to pray. Let us pray. Blessed and King of Kings, our Lord and Savior, we thank you. We appreciate you, King of the Universe. We thank you for your love upon us and your grace that you continue to show to us. We thank you for the word of God that is coming into our lives to make the changes that are needed in our lives. Father, we pray that you give us not only a hearing, but also a doing of your word. Be glorified, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. to Genesis chapter number 20 there is a man there I would like us to look at in relation to Abraham the man uh, Bimelech king of Gerar here in verse number one says and Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shah and sojourned in Gerar and Abraham said to Sarah his wife she is my sister and Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Say thee not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands, have I done this? And God said unto him, In a dream, yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I have also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. It's an interesting account here of the man Abraham and Sarah as they were traveling. We like, of course, and it is true, Abraham is the father of the faithful, but uh, this is one of those dark moments of Abraham when instead of speaking the whole truth and nothing but the truth, he spoke a half a truth and not all the truth. Because in a sense, Sarah was Abraham's half-sister. He was afraid for his life. And so he said that she is my sister. Actually, of course, she was his wife. And so we find Abraham, I say, in not a very good light. And then on the other hand, we find a man who is not a covenant man, Abimelech, doing far better than the man, the man of God. And he even has the audacity to tell God, I did this with the integrity of my heart. Here is a man with integrity. Here is a man that can tell God and ask God, will you also slay a righteous nation? What was this that made this man so special and so out of the ordinary that he can tell God, I did this out of the integrity of my heart. I am not a man that goes about picking and getting people's wives. I have integrity. And I want briefly to talk to us today on integrity in ministry and integrity in our Christian life. When I say ministry, a number of people think I'm talking about integrity in a pastor or in an apostle or in a a bishop or in such a person like that. No, I am talking about integrity in each and every last one of our lives. Because God demands integrity. In Titus chapter number 2, we'll get into that scripture, verse number 7. It talks about integrity, with that we ought to have integrity. A person of integrity is a person that their life, their actions, are in line with their inner values, and their values are based on God's word. So once you get to understand what God wants, how God wants us to live, and you have those as the values that you live with and walk by in life, and ensure that in your reactions and in your attitude and in your life, in your conduct, 
you live like that, then you will be a person of integrity. A person of integrity is not a person that lives a double life. A double life would be like a pretender, like a person that uh, you say this, but you mean that. You say this, but in your heart, that's not what you want. That's a person without integrity. A person of integrity is a person who lives right even when no one is watching. If you have made up your mind to walk as God wants you to walk, if you have made up your mind that you are a child of God, then be a child of God, not only in public, but also private. Have you not heard of people that are said to be angels abroad, but devils at home? People that could say they are men of God, and we respect them as men of God because they are they travel, they come to us, but then, and when they come to us, they speak in a certain way. They live in a certain way. But when they go back to their homes, in their families, they are terrorists. They butter their wives. They beat their wives. We have people like that. Even preachers or wives that beat their husbands. Seriously. But when they hold the Bible, they will call heaven down. Those are not people. Those are not men and women of integrity. No, they are not. Our thoughts and our behavior must be aligned with our values if we are to be people of integrity. Our behavior, our thoughts, and our behavior, our thoughts and our behavior should must be aligned with our values. And our values ought to be in line with the values that are found in God's word. What do you hold as important? What are the principles that govern your life? God speaking about Abraham again, he said, I know Abraham that he will instruct his family. He will teach his family after me. I know Abraham. What does God know about you? A great many of us are like Reuben, son of Jacob. Reuben has no backbone. Reuben has no stand. Genesis chapter number 49. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall thee in the last days. Gather yourselves together, and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken to Israel your father. Reuben, verse 3. Who is like Reuben here? Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. You would think this man is good. You would think this man has got what it takes. Look at that scripture. If you are described like that, you would say hallelujah. Who doesn't want to have a son like that? But the values in this man, verse 4, unstable as water. Unstable as water. And because you are unstable as water, you will never excel because of the very many other reasons unstable as water. Going with the wind. What kind of a person is this? Do you want to be like that? Always going by the wind? Do you, do you want to have a stand? Again, God says, uh, how shall I hide from Abraham, seeing he shall be great? Alan K. Simpson, one time uh, senator of North Carolina, said, uh, if you have integrity, it does not matter what else you don't have. But if you don't have integrity, it doesn't matter what you have. If you don't have integrity, it doesn't matter what you have. If you don't have integrity, it doesn't even matter whether you are saved. It doesn't even matter. Because when you cut that corner, you are going to behave like one that's not saved. Because you don't have integrity. Remember, my brothers, remember, my sisters, well done is better than well said. Well done, thou faithful servant. Most people will say the right thing. I can stand here and preach right, but if I cannot live right, it will never benefit me. You may be benefited by it, but personally, I will not be benefited by it. Paul said, I must beat my body so that after I have preached this gospel, I myself will not be a castaway. 
We must, my dear brethren, we must make up our minds to live a life, a life that pleases God. We must understand that there will never be a thing we will ever do that will not be noticed by God. We can never hide ourselves. We can never have a moment where we can hide from the all-seeing eye of God. As a young boy, I don't know what age I was in, but, but as a young boy, without any doubt, before I was in class five, I was seated in church back home, and I heard a story from a preacher. That preacher was my father, and he said a man had three sons. He gave each of them some eggs. They told them, go and hide them where no one can see them, where no one can see you. And so they went. They hid their eggs, but one of the sons came back with the eggs. The father asked him, why have you not obeyed me? Why have you not hidden your eggs? He said that, I really wanted to hide them. And I tried, but every, I never found a place. Everywhere I went, I never found a place. And the others started laughing at him. They said, say, look at this one. Look at this one. A small little duty. He couldn't hey, go at me. I've hidden mine. And one boy said, told him, I went. I looked. And nobody was seeing me. And I hid mine. You can't get mine. But the other boy said, I too went and looked this way, I looked that way, and I looked that way. Nobody could see me. But when I looked up, God could see me. And that's why I came with mine. There is no hiding place. Everything we do, even if you hide yourself, what's our scriptures? It says, where shall I go? Psalm 139. Whither shall I go? Verse number 7, Psalm 139. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from thy presence? I want by the grace of God, my dear brethren, to communicate a very simple truth. Which, if you keep it in your life, in your mind, in memory, it will help you for many years. Probably for the rest of your life. Brethren, there is no place any of us good or bad, saved or unsaved, Jew or Gentile, there is no place any of us can hide from God. Darkness is like light before God. Your actions, and not just your actions, your thoughts, your thoughts, the thoughts in your mind are bare before God. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall be hold. Verse 11. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. The darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. This is scripture, again in Genesis, where Hagar says, You are the God that sees me. The God of the seeing. You can't hide anything from him. Hallelujah. God knows when people are taking advantage of you. God knows when people are scheming against you. God knows when people are planning to bless you. God sees all. He knows all. There is nothing hidden from him. The book of Hebrews says, uh, in whom we have to do. In other words, in God, we each will give an account. Because there is nothing hidden from him. Let's not just be good in speaking right. Let's do right. Shall not the God of all the earth do right? It was a powerful question that Abraham asked the Lord. The God who sees all will give righteous judgment. Our thoughts must be aligned with our actions. I say our thoughts should be aligned with our actions. And they should also be aligned with our inner values. There are some people that will 
come and tell you congratulations. But in their heart, they are saying, I wish it was me. That's not a person of integrity. If you say congratulations, make sure in your heart it is actually what? Congratulations from your heart. So it should begin in your heart and then you speak. So don't speak to cover what is in your heart. Let our actions. Don't just say, hello my brother, like Abna, and you have a dagger directed to our fifth rib. Let's mean what we say. Let's say what we mean. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter number 16, the scripture verse number 9, says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. We have got to, to have integrity when it comes to the Lord. We must live. If you say you are a child of God, then live as one, behave like one, and speak like one. Whether it, you are in the market, whether you are in the place of work, whether you are at home, wherever you are, whether you are on your phone, be a child of God. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro, checking on us, checking on us. And you cannot say, I'm going to do this because the eyes have just passed. Ah, ah. Like I always say, discover God's will for your life. And faithfully, I say faithfully, do what God wants you to do. Live for God on God's terms. I say live for God on God's terms. You will never regret. I am telling you. doesn't matter what people tell you. Mind what God tells you. Obey God. Live as God wants you to live. Bring up your children the way God wants you to bring up your children. Work. Serve. Do ministry. Do whatever that you have to do for God. But do it on His terms. You will never regret all the days of your lives. Job's wife told him in uh, Job chapter number 2, he said, Are you still going to hold on to your integrity? Curse God and die. Job was a man of integrity. And Job's wife knew that Job was a man of integrity. But she only wondered, for how long are you going to continue holding on to your integrity like this? Maybe let's read that as our second last verse. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. That man was perfect, hallelujah, and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Chapter number 2, chapter 2 and verse number 9. Then said his wife unto him, do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. What kind of advice is this really? Does thou still retain thine integrity? Simple version would say what? His wife said to him, His wife said to him Are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. Curse God and die. Are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Are you still trying to align your behavior, your outward conduct with your inner values, your inner belief in God? Are you still going to remain faithful to this God that has let you down? But he said to her, hmm? you have spoken as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Oh, praise God for a man like this. Was it easy for Job? No, it wasn't easy for him. Is it going to be easy for you to maintain your integrity? No, it's not going to be easy for you to maintain integrity. There are people in the office that will tell you, nobody can know this. Just sign or just put the stamp of received. That's all I want, that it has been received. Received. Just that. Give me your account. After five minutes, check your account. Find suddenly your account has... Just because you received. Job said, no. I will maintain my integrity. And final scripture, Titus chapter number two. As we come to the close of this year, let us seek to maintain integrity in our service of God. The preacher has many temptations. One of them being... How to grow the congregation. How to fill the pews. 
The preacher can employ methods and orthodox methods or he can choose the pathway of integrity. Titus chapter number 2 verse 9 and I want us to look at this scripture in two or three translations. He says, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech, that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say about you. In all things, showing yourself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity. And corruptness is integrity. New living. Amen. Integrity. But the point is in all things. Not in some things. Not in most things. But in all things. You see, the world has few role models. If there is one thing that is lacking today it's raw models a raw model in the office a raw model on the pulpit and raw model in in life in raw model in sports raw models are are lacking they are not they are in short supply but paul tells titus in all things show yourself a pattern a model a pattern of a model of good works and in teaching showing integrity and corruptness, seriousness, and sincerity. Never imagine, I say never imagine that there is no one looking at you for an example or, or for as, as a model. Never imagine that you are not a model to anyone. Every last one of us is a model. The question is, what kind of example are you giving? Once read the story of a, of a man that was doing a mountain climbing on, you know, on very dangerous cliffs with his son. And as they were climbing up, the father would turn to the son and say, Son, climb like this. Hold there. Step here. Do this. And then as they were climbing up, he turned again to his son. He says, Son, be careful here. This is very tricky. And the son told his father, Dad, don't worry. I'll just step where you step. Don't worry. Just move. I will hold where you hold. I will step where you step. If people touch what you touch, step where you step, where will they end up? If we were to close our eyes and just follow you, everywhere you go, do everything you do, are we going to find ourselves one day in hell or are we going to find ourselves in the kingdom of God? That is the test that we are facing today. Whether you know it or not, understand it today. You are an example, either for good or for bad, to someone. More especially, first of all, your children, they are following you. Neighbors are watching you. They are watching you, marking all you do, hearing the things you say. Let them see the Savior as he shines in you. Let his power control you every day. Men will look at the life I lead. See the side I take and the things I love. They judge my Lord by my every deed. Lord set my affections on the things above. They are watching you, marking all you do, hearing the things you say. Let them see the Savior as He shines in you. Let His power control you every day. Amen. Learn that song there. Yeah, God saved. He has always helped me. Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you. Oh, we glorify you, mighty one. Help us, O oh Lord, that in all things we may show ourselves a pattern of good works. And in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. Help us, my God, that we may live uprightly, that we may live honest lives, that we may be Lord of good character. 
Help us, Lord, to do that which is right. Help us, Lord, to have strong values, values based on your word. Be glorified, Lord. Help us, Lord, that our thoughts may be aligned with our inner values. Help us, Lord, that our actions and our behavior may be aligned with our faith. Be glorified. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.